So let's talk about the AI art generation controversy, which is absolutely blowing my mind right now. Even though I'm an animator myself, I wanted to talk about how I almost entirely disagree with a lot of the anger that's coming out of the art community lately. So in this video, I'm going to talk about why I disagree with the hate that Corridor is getting over their new Rock, Paper, Scissors video, talk about some points certain content creators have brought up, and then conclude with why I'm actually optimistic for the future, even though I'm a traditional animator. So I think AI art generators have been controversial for a while now, but Corridor's latest video seems to have really galvanized a freakout mob. As if it actually solves the problem. The common denominator argument is that these AI art generators, and by extension Corridor, committed art theft. The Corridor crew did a bad thing here, is what I'm saying. They're saying that Corridor committed art theft by using the AI tools, and further by using screenshots from the anime film Vampire Hunter D Bloodlust, a film that came out 23 years ago and is now all over YouTube with no copyright takedowns. The entire film is accessible to the public, and Corridor used these screenshots to train the AI to apply the art style to their live action footage. There's a really common misconception going around as to how AI art generators were created. A lot of people seem to think that the AI just exists, and then it's trained by individuals using stolen or not stolen art to make new art in that style. That's only half true. To get the AI where it is today, these machine learning programs were trained for literally years on billions of images and art that these companies could find on the internet, until eventually it understood what it means to compose the different elements of an image. Without that process, AI image generators wouldn't even exist today because they'd be completely unusable. There needs to be an absolute recognition of value that but for the sheer mass of data and the quality of images included in that data, stable diffusion would not be nearly as good as it is. So were AI tools trained on art and photography they did not get permission to use? Absolutely. There's even a lawsuit right now from Getty Images against Stable Diffusion because in some generated images, you can clearly see a distorted Getty Images tag at the bottom of the image. Now, whether that's theft or not is up for the courts to decide. But to say that what Corridor did is art theft? Well, thankfully, there is a legal set of standards courts use to determine whether or not a work of art is in fact theft or copyright infringement. There are four standard shit. There are four standards used to determine if the work produced is either derivative or transformative. This is important because derivative work requires the copyright holder's permission. Transformative work does not. The standards are 1. The purpose and character of the new use. 2. The nature of the copyrighted work. 3. The amount or substantiality used. And 4 the impact caused on the market value of the original work. Now we can make a clear case that Corridor's video is obviously not theft of any material using these standards, particularly standards 1, 3, and 4. Standard 1 defends Corridor's use because it is massively transformative from the original work. Corridor makes no attempt at copying plot, characters, or sound from the film. Their episode is entirely an original work. Standard 3 defends Corridor's use because they seem to have used no more than a couple hundred individual frames from the film. Compare that to the number of total frames drawn for the film, which by my calculations should be... Let's, Let's see, Wikipedia says it's, it's a runtime of 102 minutes, minutes. Multiply, multiply that by 60, we get 6,120 6, seconds of runtime. Multiply that by 12, which is the standard number of frames drawn per second of footage. 10% for timing and fluff gives us about... 66,000 original drawings in the film. And that's on the low side. The real number might be much higher. Based on what I've seen in their videos, I'd estimate they used anywhere between a minimum of 66, shown in this frame, and 150 frames, though this is purely speculation. And finally, standard four, the impact caused on the market value of the original work. I'm certain that Corridor's Rock, Paper, Scissors video had no negative impact on the commercial sales of Vampire Hunter D. Bloodlust, whose commercial debut ended 23 years ago. But I'd be willing to bet that Corridor's coverage actually boosted the viewership and sales of the movie in recent days, though that is also purely speculation. But man, out of everything I've seen on this topic, nothing has bothered me more than the point this content creator made. It really is just plagiarism with extra steps, and most of those steps are also a form of plagiarism. 
We need an active, aggressive counterculture that pushes back against this nonsense wherever it rears its ugly head. AI anime needs to become as dirty a word as NFT. As life itself, I am insulted, and so should you. Do you have any idea that you're actually making the problem so much worse? Your entire point is predicated on the idea that by creating a counterculture, you'll somehow be able to stop big entertainment companies from replacing most of their animators with AI. That is unbearably naive. Companies will always find ways to try to save money. And I hate to break it to you, but Disney completely ended their 2D animation studio in 2013. Are these the jobs you claim you're trying to save? Because right now, all that it looks like to me is that you're trying to generate a mob hate mentality against a small indie studio that employs artists. Your tantrum has no capacity to change the decisions that will be made by massive entertainment studios like Disney or Warner Brothers or Sony, but it unfortunately does have the potential to impact independent artists. Artists who have nothing to do with the corporate decisions of any major entertainment studio. You're shooting at the literal people you claim you're trying to protect. Now with all that being said, it seems pretty obvious at this point that the process Corridor used to make their own anime episode is not the end of the line. The next step is going to be creating an episode of anime without any footage, and nothing more than a very specific set of directions in a text box. I would go so far as to predict that at some point in the future, content will be something the user can request on demand, as in we'll go to a platform like Netflix and type in spy movie, James Bond style, badass main character, drama with comedic moments, and it will generate that movie. Those movies will eventually even be photo real. I mean, just look at Unreal Engine today, or any other movie with crazy CGI. If human beings can make it look real today, an AI will absolutely make it look real in the future. This obviously threatens the livelihood of current traditional artists, who right now are necessary in making the process happen to create content. And it's a relatively large economy of people, I'm talking about still life artists, comic book makers, American cartoon animators, Japanese anime animators, CGI artists at big Hollywood studios, film editors, sound mixers, film music composers. All of these jobs and many more will eventually be replaceable with AI. All that being said, it's perfectly reasonable to be an artist and be concerned about the future. So unlike Mr. Offended over here, let's consider some actual solutions that may exist to this problem. I think content creators like Asmongold give it a really fair shake. He approaches the issue with a realistic understanding, that this problem is here to stay. If you look at, for example, how industrialization changed farming, it definitely probably means that there are less people in agriculture now than there were in 1810. However, there are still people that are farmers. Compared to back then, we just don't need as many farmers because today, each individual farmer is so much more effective. In the same way, I think the number of traditional animators who are hired by big entertainment studios is going to start to decrease because of this AI revolution. All real life matter exists, it is scarce by nature of the fact that it exists. But AI art fundamentally does, and art and the idea of it and the picture like a, an image, right? Like this is why NFTs don't have any value, is because there's nothing that's intrinsically value about, uh, valuable about them. But just as demonstrated by Corridor employing a large team of artists, I think that this technology is also going to open up a lot of jobs that have never existed before. I mean, there used to be tens of thousands of people working in assembly line factories in the early 20th century. Now, those jobs are mostly automated. But we also have tens of thousands of jobs today in completely new fields of work, like IT or game development. Additionally, if you compare the US population and the unemployment rate from 1929 to 2021, you can see that while our population has nearly tripled, the percentage of unemployment is roughly the same. It's just impossible to accurately predict what a future economy will look like. To that end, I'd say it's time to take a deep breath. We can't stop the improvement of technology just because it threatens the way things are today. But I suspect that just like it's always been, the creators who are the most talented and most innovative will find ways of supporting themselves on their work. Even despite AI, there will always be an audience for good content. And if you don't believe me, don't take my word for it. Listen to Tom and Tony Bancroft, as well as Aaron Blaze, professional veterans of the animation industry. 
animators who were instrumental in the things we grew up watching, like Pocahontas, Aladdin, Beauty and the Beast, Mulan, and Brother Bear. Listen to their thoughts after they have just watched the anime Rock, Paper, Scissors video. Are we the first to see this? Mm -hmm. yeah. oh, this is so amazing. excited right now. Right. <laughs> that was a feature film. That was <laughs> oh my gosh, you guys. Oh my gosh. That was crazy good. I want to say congratulations and kudos to the Corridor crew. You know, here's a group of guys that are truly artists. I can see they want to create, they want to put some really cool stuff out there. Once again, they're taking that idea of new technology, embracing it, not seeing it as a threat and rolling with it to see what they can do. You've opened Pandora's box. Somebody had to open it. Figured it'd be us. This is gonna blow up the internet. I've never been so happy and so extremely upset at you oh. at this moment right <laughs> now. Like literally, it was like when I watched Toy Story for the first time, we're like, <laughs> okay, 2D's dead. Anytime new technology comes along, they see it as a threat and they, they, you know, you get kind of territorial about what you're doing and you think it's gonna be taken away. But rather than do that, because you're not gonna stop technology, Try to embrace it. What can it do to help you? How can you learn from it? You know, I, I hope when people look at this, they don't see us as like, oh, we're killing things necessarily, but like well, more so like we're enabling And let's things. be honest, you guys are artists, right? Right. So you definitely had to be an artist to make this. Right. Yeah. Like you can't yeah. just say AI, make this. It can make it look pretty. It can't make it go to the next level that you guys went to. In the same way that uh, cameras didn't replace painters, there's always going to be a place for people doing this craft, this art, and, and doing it in a style that they want. I think it's just gonna broaden, if anything, the style. Embrace the technology, embrace the things that are new, see how you can express yourselves through them, put some beauty back into the world, and I'll talk to you next time. Thanks. In the end, this is why I'm optimistic, and actually rooting for AI. I'm excited to use these new tools to create content that has so far been completely inaccessible to me. I'm excited that it might one day be possible for a single person to quickly create their own massive anime or cartoon. I mean, just look at Astartes, which was made by one person. Does his work have less value just because it was easier for him to make it recently versus 30 years ago? In that sense, will the stories people create in the future have less value because they're easier to make with the help of AI? There might be an increase of bad and mediocre content, but I don't think that devalues the good stories that will be created. Because ultimately, what we usually value with content is not how many hours were put into its creation, but the quality or our enjoyment of the final product. AI might one day be better than me in every way, and in many ways it already is, but I'm looking forward to the challenge. Something to think about.